If you have a fantastic recipe and are considering selling it as a product, this video is for you. Today, I want to share with you an interview with Samantha Edwards. She is the founder of New Breed Meats, and I want you to hear her story because it's very inspiring to see how she took her own plant-based meat recipe from her home kitchen to produce 10,000 pounds every couple of months. Let's hear her story. Tell me, how did you get to all this plant meat production? Yeah, sure, sure. So basically about five years or so ago, I started noticing that um, there was uh, a widespread interest in plant-based living and the lifestyle. And having been living this way myself for over 20 years, I was very excited to see that so many people were embracing um, the idea of um, uh, transitioning to more of a plant forward lifestyle. It was very exciting for me. And I said, wow, you know, this is really cool that, you know, people are realizing that, um, you know, the diet that they were currently eating is, is, is probably not the very best. And it's really the cause of many different issues. And so I really wanted to, um, well, I was sad to know that as Adventists, we really didn't have like a commanding presence in mm. this market. Yeah. And um, interestingly enough, I was visiting a friend uh, a couple of years ago who's also in the industry. He's actually a Jewish guy. And he talked to me about the fact that he had um, this uh, uh, poster in his office, this plaque in his office of the very first patent on plant based meat. Mm -hmm. And so he brings it out of his office. He shows me the patent. And he says, oh, you, you'll never believe, he says, from this guy called um, John Harvey Kellogg. Have you heard of him? <laughs> so I'm like, what? <laughs> so I was just looking at each other like, is this like for real? Wow. <laughs> and I said, this, here it is, that we started this industry and we have not been the leading, um, the leaders as we could and should yeah, be. Sure. And so that was pretty much the, um, uh, I would say the reason why we really started. And in, in addition to that, motivated um, you. Yeah, it definitely was a motivation. <clears throat> and, and even prior to that, I would say, um, you know, my husband and I have been in ministry for, I don't know, about 10, 15 years now. And as we travel around the world and go to different places, we realize that a lot of people um, as we're doing different lectures and so on, they realize that, you know, a transition is needed. And a lot of them, their, their main struggle is with meat. You know, they say, well, what am I going to do about meat? It's always like the number one thing that people have issues with, of course, dairy too. So it was always meat and dairy. What am I going to do without these things? And we say, you know, we really need to address this head on and create a product line. So although I do have a cookbook called A Better Way, um, showing people how to make really healthy and delicious recipes, we also wanted to address the protein issue that people have and the meat issue specifically. And we said, we need to create something that has a taste and textual experience that people love so they can help them to make an easier transition, more of a seamless transition over to a plant-based lifestyle. So okay. that was the reason. Yeah. So you, you at the end, you, it, you have a recipe, you created a recipe, you created yeah. a formula, yes. right? And yes. you, you produce it now in mass, right? That's right. Okay, but did you study something related to this or... <laughs> Are so, you like a food course, engineer or something? I, funny enough, no, I'm actually not. I'm just a regular home cook. <laughs> uh, my, so cool. Yeah, it's so funny because, you know, my I study business management and finance, so it's completely unrelated as to what I even studied. But um, in working in the kitchen and, you know, authoring this cookbook and so on, I've been for the last over 10 plus years been involved with nutrition and food and and just really intricately involved with putting things together and putting recipes together and things that people really love. And so I think I kind of pulled from a lot of those kind of backgrounds. I'm getting certified in plant-based nutrition. Um, so awesome. there were a lot of things that was kind of happening kind of in the background, kind of leading up to this point. And when it came time to um, work on, yeah, I, I didn't say, well, I'm going to work on a, a recipe or a formula. You know, I was just, just you know, doing, doing what I normally do. Exactly. Every day. Exactly. Cool. And then um, and when I started, you know, honing in on this one thing in particular, the plant based meats, um, I, I started to try to really perfect it and, and really um, get it to the place that it could be available to everyone, you know, why in, uh, in a wide uh, <clears throat> uh, in a wide range. Yeah. OK, so now. I, I want to know how could you evolve from that 
place, yeah. like being there, right. like yeah, on, yeah. Your, on your cooking <laughs> setting at home, right. from there to mass production, like what, what happened? <laughs> like how, how, how were the steps? The step, like? Yes. Well, I, I feel like the beginning part, when I realized that, um, you know, I think I could really create something that could have mass appeal. Um, it started with me just doing little testings. We, I would just have first my husband test, you know, the okay. different things that, that, that I was making. And then we had some friends test it and some other people test it. And when we got a, re- a lot of good positive feedback, we said, okay, well, maybe that this is something that people might be interested in. And we said, well, probably a, uh, a more sure test would be to um, exhibit it at um, a- ASI. Oh, and so okay. we went to ASI in 2019 and we had a booth there, a new breed meets booth. And we had thousands of people there um, sampling and tasting our product for the first time and giving really good feedback. I mean, we had like the Whoa. most popular booth um, that year at the, at the Wait, show. So yeah. w- what you took to ASI was just made at, made at home. Exactly. So, so we you made it right booth, here at Red booth River. That you just yeah, set like up, literally. Like... Yeah. I set up a booth. Uh, we made it right can. here at Red River. Yep. We, I got all of my team together and we, we made hundreds and hundreds of pounds of product so yeah. that we can take it to the, to the, um, to, to the, the convention, right. To get the feedback, to see if this is something, you know, we were trying to produce what is called product market fit to see if people are actually interested in the market and the product. Okay. When we've got such great feedback. We're like, okay, well, I guess we can move on from there. So that's kind of how it started with. Okay. Me doing and, that. and what was the next step? And then basically from there, and I, I, I guess a little bit prior to that point, um, there was a lot of research involved with um, actually commercializing mm. um, a consumer product and kind of getting all of those things um, together, such as um, finding raw material suppliers, companies oh, okay. that provide ingredients on a mass scale. So um, how did you start getting all this stuff? You started just Googling or you got started, you, did you know someone that could so, guide you through the industry? Well, I actually started getting involved with different associations, um, with industry. So there's this one particular association for, um, uh, plant-based foods. And I just, you know, just, uh, got involved in some of the calls, they would have like these Friday um, morning calls and they would just talk about different things in the industry, but it wasn't like anything specific, specific to exactly what I was, but just bits and pieces here and there. We're kind of piecing like things together. There. Exactly. Piece things together, um, talking with different people and just kind of asking questions about how they went about the process. And, and then what ended up happening was we, um, we got involved in an accelerator program, a business accelerator program. Mm. And that was really helpful because we were able to kind of learn um, a little bit more as it relates to commercializing a product and so on. So we, we had different mentors that would kind of walk us through some things. But by and large, I would say it was a lot of legwork and research, um, kind of you know, just understanding how something is made, um, how the process is even begun, we did try to reach out to some food scientists, but because of the nature of the product and so on, um, it was difficult to get um, someone that really knew the processing step. So a lot of it, I just, the Lord just helped me, honestly, to really kind of put it together, um, kind of figure out all the, the large scale equipment that's necessary. And then we started making it in a little bit larger scale, um, cool. not as much as what we're doing now, but you know, we were just doing a few pounds here and there to then a few hundred pounds that I was producing. And now we do a lot more. Were you producing at home or you already had an an industry doing it for you? So we were doing it out of a commercial kitchen. Commercial kitchen. kitchen. You were renting a commercial kitchen? Yes. Yeah. So we would go in in the evenings and... And you started selling where? Where? And then we just started selling to um, to people that we knew. We are we were at the time, so we were in Northern oh, okay, California. Okay. Cal- Cal- so it was um, a lot of people that we knew. They were people who just you know they would buy it because they really loved it. And um, and then we put it online. We put it online because around this time. So now we're like 2020. COVID? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then it was okay. so crazy around that yeah, time. Yeah. And you know we had these big plans after um the show to to really do this big push um but of course you know with covid so we said okay well at least let's take it online and see since everyone is home and so on 
So that's what we did. And so people were buying it online and then we would be shipping it out, which we still do now. Uh, people order online at eatnubri.com cool. and then we kind of ship it to them. Um, but our goal really is to get into the retail stores okay. as well as um, in different food service venues, okay, such so, as restaurants, hospitals, and okay. so on, yeah. schools. So yeah. right now, how much are you producing? How many pounds are you yeah. doing monthly or weekly? So we produce at any given time about 10,000 pounds of product. So that equates to about 40 or 50,000 units mm -hmm. um, of, of um of products so it's not the largest scale but it definitely is a is a far stretch from where we oh, were yeah, before yeah, but yeah. yeah so we produce a good amount of product at any given time and that is you do that every so we do that every couple of months, couple of months. um wow. yeah so we we um we kind of because the product is frozen um, it can, it's kind of oh, sits okay. in the freezer for a little bit and then, and then we kind of produce as needed. So today you're just selling online in a way that's so your market? So we're online, we're in a few specialty retailers, like some co-ops and health food stores, um, some ABCs, um, okay. we need to actually get into really all of them. Um, wow. so, so yeah. how many years from cooking from your kitchen yep. to now okay. selling like... Okay, so we're on, let's see, 2020, so I would say we are... Four years in, four, four years and a half in. years wow, in. Wow, that's yeah, really cool. Four and a half years in. Mm -hmm. God has blessed that. Yeah. Okay, so guys, why why <laughs> do you? I wanted you to hear this because I know that many people have thought about like creating a, a product. You know, yeah. many people think yeah. it's like, oh, this thing is so good, we should make this. Right. And and sometimes we're limited by ourselves. You yeah. know, because I mean, you heard Samantha. She's not a food engineer. She's no. nothing with the business of. A industry of, of right. food making. She That's was just right. cooking at home, but she had a vision, got motivated. Mm -hmm. You felt the call, I guess. That's right. That's right. And there we and go. That's Boom. It. And, the, and the Lord really just opened the doors. I mean, we wow. had so many opportunities just from this business to be able to share, you know, what we're doing and the health and the reasons why. It's, it, it's not only to affect us physically, but also mentally and spiritually. And, and we really want people to know that. Um, you know, God designed our bodies um, uh, to heal and to and for us to be uh, good stewards over, to take care of. Oh, and so man. we really want to get that message across um, by and large. And, and, and so people realize that, you know, the decisions that they make day after day will ultimately affect not only themselves, but also their families and, and future generations. So just really inspiring people in that light. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. last question before we go. Yeah. Do you do mission with your product? Like how how do you like put Tied together the like the yes. gospel and, and your product? How do you do it? Yeah, so definitely. Others? With our tagline being plants on a mission, it was really important for us to ensure that the mission and, and, and really spreading um, the gospel is interwoven in everything that we do. And so we support a lot of community health initiatives, such as cooking classes and, and, and seminars and um, the lifestyle retreat that we're, we're here at, at, at Red River Outpost. So, um, you know, we, we started the business because we want the proceeds to go towards um, helping others to know our Lord better. Amen. Amen. Cool. Yes. Awesome. So if they want to get in touch, what email they can write to you? If someone yes. wants to ask you some questions. Sure. Yes. So um, you can email us at hello at eatnewbreed.com. Okay, you can also cool. follow us on Instagram at eatnewbreed. Uh -huh. And just go to and our website too. The website was not what? Eatnewbreed? Eatnewbreed.com. Eat I'm going to put the link in the description below. So don't worry. Everything's going to be there. Yes. And uh, you got to taste it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Samantha. Thank you so much. <laughs> and guys, I just want you to hear this so you can get inspired. If you have any idea that you're wanting and, and it's just sitting there, you're procrastinating too much. Well, just pray yes. and let the, the Lord guide you and just start. Amen. Don't delay more. Start right. and start soon. Did you like the interview? I invite you to help this ministry. Head right now to their website and get some of those amazing products. Also, you can go to your local store and tell them about it so they can reach more people. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share this video with your network. Remember to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified on our latest content. And if you want to learn more about OCI and how we can help your ministry thrive, check the links in the description below. See you next week and God bless.